Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Welcome to part two of the little 12 inch Philco. I've got my two tubes that I need for this, which was the uh, 4 EH7 and the 5 GJ7, so we're going to pop those in. Also, out of curiosity, I'm going to pull away this shield here and just do a brief test on the electrolytics and make sure that none of them are open. And if so, maybe just tack solder something in there just to, again, make it work. Uh, tearing this thing apart would be just nightmares. So unless it really has to be done, I really don't want to do it. So let's get the tubes in and then let's get the cover shield off. Now, here's something you have to be weary of. And this is something that really uh, you're going to run into a lot. And you see this green fuzzy stuff here that's on the pins? Uh, that worries me. Because what happens is, is that green fuzz will break through the glass and will cause the tube to leak and go to air. So what I do is I, uh, I abrade the pins and I usually put something like a, an antioxidant chemical on here. Uh, like Keg S5 is a good thing for that just to keep the, the oxide from spreading up the pins because if it does, this will go to air. So we need to address that. All right, so the tubes are in. In order to get to the electrolytic, you take this off, and this is just kind of clipped in here, so we're going to uh, pop that shield off and then take some measurements. All right, so with the shield off, here's the electrolytic here. And uh, when I ran this the first time, I didn't measure any undue heat or anything from it. But what we are going to do is just do some uh, basic ESR tests. Since it wasn't getting hot, I can assume it wasn't leaky. And let's see what we get here. So here's that. First section looks good. Second section looks good. Third section looks real good. And fourth section looks good. So I'm not even going to bother messing with this because that's obviously in great shape. So shield goes back on and uh, let's put a signal into it and see what we get. So everything's back in this thing. You can see I found a little knob for it. I kind of want to find the original, but whatever. So now let's uh, turn it on and see what it does. Can't remember whether this converter does channel 3 or 4. We'll find out. Got just raster. Let's see, tubes light in there. Ah, there we go. Touchy socket. Getting better. Come on, wakey wakey. Alright, so obviously our horizontal frequency is way off. Tweaky, tweaky. Wow. Look at that mess. Fine tune me. Look at the tunable ghosties. Oh, sorry about that. There we go. Wow. So that's bad IF response right there. A lot of time with the boga. Not only feeding her and <laughs> to make sure that she's appropriately simulated socially as well as the things to do that she would be doing when she was with the clan. So we've still got this annoying vertical buzz in the sound that appears to be uh, entirely because of some sort of vertical amp decoupling. I'm tweaking with the size and linearity here just to make it 
fill the screen a little better. God, that's annoying. But the, you can see the video response is all buggered. I wonder if we have an open IF can or something. And then the uh, horizontal hold control is at its extreme right now. And it's just barely locking in there. Oh, and you notice that when I uh, when I move this tuner tube, the ghosties change. Of course, that could just be because something going on there. I wonder if that new tube I got's defective. I mean, it's improving as it warms up, but I shouldn't be able to have tunable tunable ghosts. Ugh, the video response is just awful. So I need to check this thing and see if it's in fact good. It might not be. And then I gotta dig for another one. And then the stupid buzz. That's awful. Also, this thing doesn't get very bright. I don't know if that's a video response problem or whether it's something else. But the team will need to find it first. Some owners have a camouflage coloring, speckles of brown and cream. That well, that's just gross. That's later when the wildlife dogs continue. Mmm, smeary, smeary. And something for sure getting hot. I can smell it. No glowy tubes, nothing weird. When you are home alone, an emergency can become a tragedy. I wonder if somebody was wrenching on those cores down there. Because it looks like one of them might be broken. Whether in the bathroom, that core looks cracked. At home, so I wonder if somebody was messing with it. And on the go. Help! I've fallen in the park and I can't get up. Don't worry, help is on the way. Okay. Life alert saves a life every All right. Well, we've still obviously got issues here. Uh, let's just pull and check that tuner tube I got real quick just to make sure that it's not defective. Uh, this one's going to suck. All right. So into the tester it goes. My assumption was that it was new old stock since I had to break the seal on the box, but we'll find out, won't we? Oh, let me kill the wind noise here. Sorry, folks. It's about a bajillion degrees inside of here right now. Let's see. Am I in the right socket? 6GJ7. Socket Not lighting up now. Wasn't well, the TV set? Let's just double check here. C E C A B F D, C E C A B F D, and then B A. Yep, should be. This thing should be lighting up right now. Interesting. Let me look at this further. Yeah, it was a crusty pin. See, that's why I don't like those. Uh, it's not registering worth a crap. The socket's all tore up. I got nothing. Test one. Nope, still nothing. I can't imagine it's that bad. Of course, and the filament keeps going out too. So, Alright, let me burnish the socket on this thing and see if I can get it to work better. Okay, so now I've got a good test there. And let's see. So we're going to move this for test number two. Move this. 
And let's see. Alright, so let's just double check this. Number two, we got C blank, C A B. Yep. And then uh, blank, blank, F E, B, F2. Okay. And the that's a 51. But it's got a short. Let's just double check this. C blank, C A B, blank. Blank E F or F E, yeah, F E, and then B F and two, and it's got a short, and it doesn't pass any tests. Yep, Doctor Defecto. All right, that sucks. Got nothing. Up, oh, it's twitching all over. Yeah, this thing's defective. Damn it. All right. So we got to pull another one out. That might explain our tunable ghost, and whenever I get my fingers close to it, it would screw up. So, yeah. Another 5GJ7 time. All right, let's see if this 5GJ7 works. I think it's time for me to pull this socket. There we go. I've had this thing a long time, probably needs to have the sockets replaced on it. Wakey, wakey. This switch is touchy too. No short there. Alright, and let's see what the second section is. So there's this. Change that over to F and E. B F two. And that one has to turn way down. All right. So that one's usable. I've said it once, and I'll say it again. If you have to buy tubes online, best bet is uh, Jim Cross of Vacuum Tubes Incorporated. Never had something bad from him come yet. The last one I got was defective. Alright, so let's get this back in there and see if the set then works. Alright, let's see if now that we've got a real tuner tube in it, if we can get rid of these tunable ghosties. Wakey, wakey. So it would appear not. I mean, the picture's better, but it still has smear o -matic. Look at all that wonderful smearing there. Ah, now we got problems with the sink locking in. Yeah, the horizontal frequency is just like barely doing it. And then we've still got that obnoxious buzz. And the IF response on this is just awful. So I'm wondering if we got an open can or somebody's been tweaking on it, whatever. And we've still got that obnoxious vertical buzz. The amplitude of that sound is in direct proportion with the vertical size, so something's bleeding over. Yeah, I love how we won't sync up, so we've still got major issues going on here. 
wonder if we've got some kind of AC leakage going on. Alright, so it looks like at this point, no matter what, the chassis has to get pulled in order to accomplish things, but then you run into some difficulties. Difficulty number one is, is that even if you take the chassis out of the set, now you have to have a picture tube along with it. And these, I can tell already, are not going to be long enough to have the chassis out and <clears throat> hook it up to a tube, so I need a test jig, which I don't have. Not for a black and white anyway. Uh, secondly, somebody's been messing with these IF coils. Uh, this one over here has got a crack in the slug, so I'm not really going to be able to work it. And all the others have been like way backed out, so that doesn't seem right, like somebody was monkeying with it. And then there's the scary problem with the vertical and the sound. There's something with the horizontal, probably this phase detector diode down here. If we zoom in on it, that guy's probably on his way out. Uh, so we could change him. You could. This would just be like a time vampire, and you could like spend your life on this thing. And in all honesty, I've got other projects that I kind of want to mess with. So I think I'll put this one on the back burner. But definitely, the chassis's got to get yanked. No doubt about that. Chassis's got to get yanked. Uh, we got to see what's going on here. I really don't want to do an IF alignment on this. It's just. I want to kind of make it into like a composite monitor, but then at the same time it's a line operated set, so I would have to figure out some sort of isolation, either via capacitors or uh, a one-to-one -one matching transformer for both audio and video. So it's kind of cool, but I think realistically it may get turned into a prop or a composite monitor or something like that. And if so, we'll we'll go over the steps of doing that. But this is just something that I think I'm going to eat up a lot of time on, and I think I'm going to put this one on the back burner, kind of like the Olympic. Shame I have to do that, but that's realistically what it is. Uh, this one's been monkeyed with, and I'm kind of, I hate it when I see this, because you just wonder what else is going to go on. I've got like about 12 or 13 other sets I want to get to. And those of you that know me uh, elsewhere know that I just got one of those 66 Motorola's, one of the 23 EGP22's in it, that's dead. Uh, so I gotta find a replacement CRT for that. There's other stuff too. So, in the meantime, I'll figure out a way that we can do a workaround on this thing. Uh, yeah, but no matter what, the chassis's gotta get yanked. I didn't want to have to go that route, but it looks like I'm gonna have to. So, we'll see. Maybe we'll come up with a another section of the video I think I'll just try changing the horizontal phase detector diode just for grins and giggles and see if I can get my sync back and my horizontal range back alright so I swapped the uh, phase detector diode and did a touch up on the frequency coil which uh, allows me to get a better range of horizontal it's still not great but I think the, that's because this control is all worn out it has those tin whiskers uh, as far as the ghosting, I seem to have gotten rid of most of that, and that was due to somebody's meddling. Let me get the light on here. Um, if we look down in here, you see that little thing with the spring on it and the cam attached to it? That's your fine tuning right there. And uh, I tweaked that stepped cam to give me a little more usable range. And that allowed me to fine tune the picture better and get a lot of those ghosts out. So it looks a whole hell of a lot better now. That's very watchable. You can actually read the uh, little station identifier in the bottom, which I couldn't do before. And yeah, the, the ghosts still tune a little bit, but it's so much better than it was. The snow in the picture is just my crummy coax. Now the buzz in the sound came and went as I was tweaking with things. So <clears throat> there's probably something like a capacitor or something like that in there that's buried that's still messed up. Where it could be that uh, the sound detector tube or something like that's messed up too. I tested okay on the tester, but I'm tempted to swap it out just to see what happens. But so far, by some miracle, it's looking a lot better. 
I think if I can get rid of that stupid buzz, it'll be decent. So I'm wondering if I can grab some freeze mist and spray a couple of those caps back there. That'll go away. Let's find out. Okay, so we got the green jobbers back here by the IF can. Don't hear much difference. And then we got this one back here. Still no difference. There's this decoupler here that I didn't change out. Still nothing. And there's one that's like tucked way back in there. It's hard to get to that one. Yeah, no change. Funny how I froze that sound detector tube and it's not doing much. That should be pretty toasty, shouldn't you think? Why isn't that ice melting? Hmm. Picture looks pretty good on that now, huh? Yeah, why isn't that sound detector tube melting? Ah. Let's get the uh, temperature probe and see what it's doing. All right, so if we take a temperature measurement, like the vertical output here. It's 140. That's Celsius. That's pretty toasty. Yeah, my arm's in the way. Hold on. The IF's about 74 Celsius. The first IF's about 65 Celsius. That sink separator, 65 Celsius. The sound tube should be pretty toasty. That's a Class A. That's 159 Celsius. That's about right. And yeah, that sound detector tube is 75 Celsius. That's about right. But it sure didn't like me messing with that. And it kind of came and went too, so that makes me wonder. Wonder if I've got a sound tube or two I can swap with this stuff. All right, so after messing with the tube sockets, here's what I find. If we go to our output tube here and wiggle it. Oh look, buzz goes away. Does buzz go away with sound? Hello? Oh, Millie, how many have I got? 32 at 750 There we go. So it's the output tube that's the problem. The sockets either coming loose from the board or something else. Uh, or the socket is bad. But if I get it in the right spot, it'll play. So. I may just cut off a little bottom, the part of the bottom and deal with that. You now peeping through the knot hole of Grandpa's wooden leg, we can see that the they've got a strut bar there. But it's true that the uh, solder doesn't work, look too good. And uh, I'm betting that there's a loose connection or something like that. Yeah, that looks like one. I can get the damn thing to focus. Come on. Zoomy, zoomy. Like that one didn't look all that great. 
There's one underneath that looked look kind of crummy too. Yeah. Stupid software wants to focus on the grading and not that. So, yeah, there's other some other crummy solders in here too. It's just like the more and more I look at it, the more this has to get yanked. I can't just do a shortcut and cut out through here, especially since that's right along the enforcement strut. That's going to compromise. But that's really what's going on there is that either that socket's bad or uh, the soldering's bad. I think I'm going to take a closer look at the solder. Still crummy. I cleaned the socket. That obviously didn't change anything. Let's see if I can get an insulated stick here. Yeah, see? See if I push on this stuff here. Oh, what the hell? You get my sound back? Got the papers now. Ah, we got a loose connection there. Let's take a closer look at that one. So right there where that white wire is and that jumper is where I was poking around. And just pressing on that jumper really changed things. So what I'm going to attempt to do is I'm going to dribble some solder down that hole and get that jumper nice and hot and see if the solder will retake to the board and then uh, maybe that will be our cure uh, for the sound problem and then maybe touch that wire wrap up too because that one that one doesn't look so great if I just kind of like move it it's not great so but definitely want to dribble some solder down in there and then uh, once we have an opportunity to do that we'll see if that cures our sound thing I'm just kind of moving stuff out of the way right now but yeah we'll uh, we'll get this out of the way and then we'll dribble some solder down there and see what happens might very well cure it okie dokie let's see what happens No hum yet. Of course, not much of anything. And no power. Let's double check something. And yeah, my little cheater had come undone. Let's see now. Got power now. There we go. No more buzz. Reheating that joint worked. Let's see if I can push on it and bring it back. I just can't handle having my life dictated by my credit score. You do know about Credit Sesame, right? It sounds like just another free credit score. Yep. Credit Sesame it's happy. Credit Sesame gives you the power to take control of your credit and just think about all you can do with great credit so I don't have to drop off the grid. Don't touch that! Cool. Credit Sesame for free today. So there she is, nice and happy. Hey, there's an item about us in Sheila Faber's column. She must have seen the show last night. We got a little bit of uh, non-linearity up at the top. No surprise there. I'm just kind of doing this by eye. Listen to this. Caught a performance of the Partridge family last night and can add my voice to the enthusiasm for this new group that's sweeping the music world. The whole family has a fresh roll of And now I've got a little bit of squish up top. Go on. Yeah, come on. What does it say? Uh, nothing much. Oh, come on, Danny. Are we going to be stars or aren't we? Okay. That's better. But it's young Danny Partridge. And we got plenty of uh, contrast. His twinkling Black eyes. Black levels look good. Are absolutely irresistible. 
terrible DC restoration on this, but it's a cheap set, so it doesn't surprise me. So there you go, another one saved from the dump. I've never believed that circuit boards and tubes should be mixed. This was a great example of that. I'm sure there's other bad connections on there or ones that are getting touchy, but so far, just jostling the set doesn't do anything but piss off the uh, digital here. Of course, I can just move that wire to the side and everything goes nuts. Yay, digital. So for now, it's working. Hope you guys enjoyed watching the video. More stuff to come soon. Alright, so you can see that I shined the set up a little bit. I took some filler paint and got that big gouge there on the mask, which I may try to blend in. I cleaned the uh, cabinet and polished the trim. As you can see, it's nice and shiny. I put a polarized cord on it to replace that janky looking cord that was on the back. And it uh, didn't turn out so bad. Nice looking set. So I'll bench test it some more and run it for a couple days to make sure everything's cool with it and then uh, it'll find a new home. So if you're ever curious what I do with these things after I fix them, if I really like them they stay in the collection, if I think they should find somewhere else to live they do. So if I decide to get rid of it keep your eyes open on eBay and you may see this one. Anyway again thanks for watching, more stuff to come.